So let's assume we are given a data matrix where each column is a feature f1, f2, so on, so forth, fj, so on, so forth, fd, and each row corresponds to a point, ith point, so on, so forth, n. This is n cross d, and the ith data point is xi transpose here, right? And this is the jth column, right? This is the jth feature or column. Okay, this corresponds to columns. This is our standard practice of representing a data matrix. Now, so each of your so each of your x size belong to R D. Let's assume let let x size belong to R D. Right. So what if what if I compute a mean vector as follows? Okay. What if so suppose if I have, if I have two vectors, let's call them x one and x two. Okay. If this is two point two and four point two. This is one point two, and let's say three point two. These are two-dimensional vectors. Here, x one belongs to R two. This also belongs to R two. So, x one plus x two is basically you do component-wise sum. This is your first feature or first component. This is your second feature, second component, right? So, you sum these two. That's what it means. Which is three point four. If you sum these two, if you sum these two, it is seven point four. This is what sum of two vectors mean. This is the sum of two vectors. This is component-wise sum. So mean of vectors. Suppose what if what if I compute x bar, which again belongs to R D. Okay, let's where I define my x bar as one by n summation over all the points x i. Here x i is a vector. Remember. So what am I doing? I'm doing component-wise sum, and I'm taking the average. Right. This is what is called a mean vector of a data set. This is called a mean vector. Okay. What I am doing? This is nothing but one by n. Okay. X one plus x two, so on so forth. X n. This is what it means. Right. Again, here each of your x size, each of your x size again belong to R D. These are not scalars. These are vectors. So just like scalar mean. I can also define a mean vector. Now you might ask, what does it mean geometrically? Let's understand the geometric interpretation of a mean vector. Imagine if I have two features. Again, we'll always understand it in two dimensions, f1 and f2. Let's assume each of them are my points. Okay, just for simplicity, let's assume these are heights of students and these are weights of students. Just for simplicity. So each of our xi belongs to R2. Okay, where the first one is height, the second one is weight. Okay, the first feature is height. This is my f one. This is my f two. Okay, so what is what does mean vector represent geometrically? Geometrically, what it represents is nothing but. Uh, so this will be your mean vector. Because what are you doing? So if I project all of these points and compute their f one or feature one values, for this you'll have this value. For this you'll have this value. For this, you'll have this value. So, if I, if I project all of these points on x-axis, okay. Now I have scalars, right? I have basically heights of students, and if I compute the mean height, okay, for the mean vector, for the mean vector, okay. So, for the mean vector x bar, okay, let's call the height of mean vector and the weight corresponding to mean vector, okay. The height corresponding to the mean vector is nothing but the mean height, the mean of each of the heights of i going from one to n. Okay, the mean of the mean weight vector corresponding to this is nothing but simply the mean of your w i is i going from one to n. Because what are we doing? Let's look at the formula. It's component wise sum, right? Sum basically is component wise, which means if I sum all of them and take the mean. If I sum all of them and take the mean, I will get it. So geometrically, a mean vector is just like just like for scalars, right? For scalars, right? For scalars, what does mean represent? So for example, for all these values, let's assume the mean is here. Mean is sort of like a central height or the central value, right? Mean is like a central value. We saw median also, if you recall, uh, in exploded data analysis. But mean, assuming there are no outliers and all of that stuff. Mean mean height represents a central value, and this will correspond to 
the mean vector and this is your mean so this will be your mean weight and this will be your mean height so geometrically speaking if i have a bunch of points like this right the mean vector is sort of like a central vector or a central data point right so geometrically mean vector is nothing but a central vector just like mean is a central value for scalars a mean vector is a central value or a central vector okay so that's the interpretation of a mean vector we'll also see other things like covariance of a data matrix and things like that later uh, later in this uh, in this section